Welcome back to Tibbs Farm. I'm Tibbs. Hey, we got parts in. Here's all the new spark plugs or spark plug wires. Here is the new spark plugs. And here is a little box to rebuild the distributor. So we're gonna go over all of that fun stuff today. This is a front mount distributor. We're actually gonna try this, I guess technically the most difficult way possible with just a regular old adjustable wrench or a crescent wrench, whatever you wanna call it. I know crescent is technically a manufacturer and adjustable is the proper name. All right, so we got this first bolt out and in the process of getting it out, I uh, this spark plug wire, which runs up to, I'm gonna call the number three. So one, two, three. It uh, barely even held on doesn't feel like it's connected at all and that might actually be some of our issues with uh, like uh, sounding like there's a misfire like it shouldn't like see how this one there's more tug this one I can literally see if I can get it up in there just pops off and no matter how hard I try to push it up in there it don't click in like it's supposed to yeah, that's definitely bad. And that's robbing us of the power that we need. So let's get the spark plug wires up. And we have the other wire, or the other bolt. I don't know if we can see that. Yep. Um, right here. There's just two bolts. We got the second bolt out. Now we gotta disconnect that little bit of a wire. Good so footage of it. Yep, there you go, right there. And I Alright, so once you get that little wire on the top off, it comes out rather easy. Plenty of room for it to just slide up front. And then ta-da, here we go. So here we have the distributor. Take this on um, off and there you go. So I learned the true meaning of uh, shade tree mechanic. Uh, out there in the sun, phone got too hot, stopped recording. So we got the phone cold down again. We've moved into the shade. Now let's continue on opening the distributor up. All right, so this was sticky, got it popped open. We have a cork gasket that we can put here, but we have a new cap, so we don't really need this one anymore. And then we also have, actually let's look at all the parts that we have. We have that to replace, that to replace, and then some internals. We're going to take note at the position that this is in because if we're off by 180 degrees, then that's probably going to cause us issues in the future. So, we'll note that this is pointing down to the number four, roughly the number four. All right, so, off camera, I uh, pulled that up, pulled straight off, so you get down into all this stuff here. Save that because we don't have a replacement. And I... Uh, Removed the screws off screen and kind of temporarily 
put everything back in. Um, we have that screw right there, that screw right there. This one holds that strap in, which holds this little guy, this screw right there at the top of my finger. It holds the wire in. So those parts are able to come out. And then you have two more screws right there and right there. And this, sh oh, I didn't get this uh, cotter pan out. So let's get that done. All right, so once you get that cotter pan off and you get the washer out, this uh, does come up. Uh, this particular one is not wanting to come up. Just got a little screwdriver up underneath here and just a little bit of prying and it slides right off. Uh, did take a rag and wiped out all the stuff that I could get. So it, it is cleaner than it was. And cleaned up all the mating surfaces as best I could with uh, just a rag. Previous one, this they had together and this little strap underneath. I prefer to go and have a little bit more contact area. So we're gonna sandwich the two pieces together and then screw it in. So this comes with, this strap right here has to go down here. The previous, the rebuild on this thing, it looked like that strap was underneath the copper, I guess, bimetallic strip. Um, I put it so that it is sandwiched between the two. My thought is uh, better conductivity up to that strap. Instead of just the copper, you have the copper and that steel bar. Um, next step would be to start this because this screw is uh it's done in an area that you can't get your fingers too well maybe if you got really small fingers so what i did is i put the screw in that strap right there and then kind of fished it up in there and then started it as you can see it definitely has a lot more to tighten down but i was figured that that was going to be a real pain trying to get this down and that screw in at the same time and tightening it down i don't have three hands it looked like a process that would need three hands after that we got this down there and that down there ensuring that those two actually line up uh, with this bands right here it wants to be over here so you have to just you know finagle it in there and now we got to put the screws in there and there, the washer on, and then the brass cotter pin that came with the rebuild kit. So let me get to that and then get back. All right, so the screws are in there. This part is to get this wire fished down and actually get the fork up underneath that screw. And I'll tighten that down and then install this screw right here. And then get back at it. So I said I was going to need to use the red disc. Came with a new one. And I'm actually going to do something that most people won't ever do. I'm going to date this and put my name on it. Indicating the last time this thing was rebuilt. Before I assemble this thing. That way the next time this thing gets rebuilt. Whenever they open it up. They can see that it was done by me. And that... It was done on this date. So, right, there we go. Rebuilt. 2022, September 22nd. By Tibbs Farm. Check it out on YouTube. Now, you can see that there's a little indexing mark. And there's where it's indexed to. So, let's just go ahead and press this on. All right. So, uh, a little bit of a wiggle back and forth. Not, I mean, not really noticeable but it feels like you're doing it and just get it down in there and we said it was approximately at number four 
or I guess technically, I guess technically it's number two, but what will we called? No. Three, hold on. All right, so I've been numbering them backwards. I've been numbering them back to front. Apparently they are front to back. So, oh, I almost did the exact same thing that I've been cursing up the previous guy about not doing. Uh, opening it up, and there is not a single gasket anywhere on here. And I have an entire brand new gasket kit here with this, so I was almost as bad as the last guy. All right, so cork gasket installed, and then now let's put it on. I may have to actually use two hands for this. I don't know the exact best way to do this, but how I just did it, press the thumb on this side. Let me swap hands here. And the other thumb right here in the middle, it uh, springs it a little, like opens it up some and allow you to get slot. Oh, sorry about that. It lets you slide right on. Now let's start putting the rest of it together. All right, so. Got the cork gasket in there. Um, it does make that extra tight to go and get up on there. So you do have to use two hands and kind of rest that down on the belly. But it's up and it's nice and tight. All right, so the type of spark plug wires that you get with this is not the type that you would typically get in like a car where you have the produced end here and you already got an end cap there no you have where the spark plug goes and then that you have to crimp your own so the awesome thing about that is it gives you the ability to instead of having these things all ran wherever like you can see, uh, yeah, you can see where there's damage here. That was actually from previous times of that particular line running up against the exhaust manifold. So you can go and actually take your time, clean this up, route it in a nice pretty order, and then mark it. I already got the number one, not number four, number one spark plug wire marked and here's my mark look how much longer that was so um and that's even with i could probably get away with about here i'm giving myself a little extra to play with just in case um but I'm trying to go and get the the prettiest routing i mean it's, it's spark plug wires you're not going to get them super pretty but the more time we take at routing them now, the less headaches we can go and have in the future of stuff melting or getting caught in a fan or a belt. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I am jumping a little ahead of myself and not keeping you guys up to to date with some of the things so i put all the wires in routed them down marked them about where they need to go i then came with uh, these little yellow zip ties and uh started bundling up them up together like a little you know wiring harness giving myself enough room at each plug that i can manipulate the uh wire to be able to get onto the spark plug itself and with doing that, I also uh, kept them nice and neat. So I know this one is the number four cylinder, three, two, one, going down to their individual spots. Uh, once I get into place, I might actually be 
putting a couple more zip ties for now. Uh, would like to go and uh, eventually get something a little bit prettier than the zip ties holding them together. Um, whether it's the uh, wire bloom thing, the plastic slide over things or whatever. But it's going to be looking a lot better than that rat nest was. So improvements. So along with the wires, kit comes with these boots. Make sure you slide the boots onto the wire with the big part of the boot facing the undone wire. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, strip the uh, rubber insulator off of the wire inside. And then if we can focus, there's a little wire in there. You're going to want to feed that through. You're going to want the insulator coming all the way up to the edge of the... Um, the gnarled end right here that's the end that you're going to be crimping down um, you're not going to be able to do that by hand you're going to have to go and use some kind of tool which I will get to off camera and then we will bend the wires back and if you want to go with extra steps um, solder it all together um, make it real nice so I'll get to all of that here in a bit as we finish up we got new spark plugs uh, gapped to the 0 0.025 like the book says as you can see I've uh, cleaned up the, uh, the zip ties um, got them routed up added a couple more as I got everything down here I still need to come through, clean up some, but it is, you know, not touching it and even wiggling it some. It is clear of that belt. That's its natural rest point right there. So even as the belt, you know, jostles around, she should stay clear. And then on this side, same thing. Uh, all of this was actually brought on because this wire right here, when I found it, was rubbing up against here, routed uh, under here. It was rubbing up here, went under to here, and it came up this way. And it's just an absolute mess. And Sure, it took much longer than just throwing the wires any random place, but they're out of the way. They look much neater than they were. And it's just, you know, doing the little things step by step. Every time you go on upgrade something or change something out, if there's a better way of putting it in, why not take the extra time to do it? It looks better and it shows that you take pride in your work. But this video is already going to be way too long. I un I already understand. I'm going to have to edit it all down, edit it together. There's a lot of splicing I got to do. Whatever. Um, it's the first time I've done video editing in many months. So, <laughs> just one more thing to do. And as always, have a great day.